Okay. So um, this is Angel Studio. Um, I was building an e-commerce website. So this is the links I was talking about. Um, this is my GitHub link. And also I have hosted uh, through Vercel and I'm gonna cover that um, through my presentation. So my objectives and milestones for the Angel Studio e-commerce website. Um, on my screen, the objectives and milestones was to create a user-friendly website that will allow customers to easily browse and select photo booth packages, add-ons and services. Um, to provide customers with a seamless booking and payment process, and also to ensure that the website is responsive and can be accessed from any device, including tablets and mobile phones. So this is the project milestones that I had um, from the month of April to June. So I did have a few challenges, but I was able to commit to what I had previously alluded to working through. Um, so the technologies that I use for my project, I use React, um, this is something I had not learned before, but I was hoping to challenge myself and uh, build, you know, a website. I know React is real popular and, uh, you know, I was hoping to create this website as, you know, for my portfolio when I'm looking for work and to showcase um, the skills that I've learned. Um, I also used uh, Firebase for my authentication um, and database. Um, also, I wanted to use Stripe for payments and GitHub is the hosting platform. I also use the um, Vercel um, that works in conjunction with GitHub, and that is for the cloud deployment for hosting my website. So the challenges that I went through um, during this project was um, learning React. So again, this was the first time I was using React. So there was really a lot um, of tutorials that I had to watch and a lot of videos um, to learn. Um, other than that, I did have challenges implementing my payments um, through Stripe and my checkout cart. So that is still something that I'm working on. And also I haven't finished working on my menu bar. Um, there's a menu which I will show you how it works, you know, but it's pretty good so far. So the work in progress again is the menu and the checkout cart that I'll be working on to finish my project. So, as I was saying before, I was using Vercel, um, which is pretty good. Um, it supports automatic deployments. Um, whenever I push changes to my main branch, it changes and triggers a new deployment. It builds and deploys the website, you know, based on my configuration. So if I make any changes on my VS code and I push to my GitHub, so Vercel um, sends, um, you know, it sends a notification to my email. Um, and then tells me, you know, notifies me that it has accepted the change and that I have deployed. So if I refresh my website, I can definitely see the changes. And, you know, it can, it also allows me to share the link um, to people and then they can, you know, click the link and get to see my website. So that was great. Um, so this is also my GitHub. Um, I made sure to put Angel Studio as public as you had wanted. So this is where you can find my my project. So this is just a snippet of my homepage. Um, this for my presentation. So this so far is where we don't have somebody who has signed in or signed up. So that's as far as my presentation goes. I will share. Oh, one, one quick question. Uh, sure. So, um, Verso is actually a free, I mean, or we need to pay. Oh, no, it's it's absolutely free. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's so it's free. Yeah, um, it's oh, absolutely okay. free. I haven't paid anything. You just sign up with your email oh, and that's awesome. it. Yeah. Awesome. That's good. Nice. Yeah. 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 So this is, this is it. And, you know, if I need to deploy, I just click on visit. And it also gives me, so this is the link that I can share. And you know anybody I share the link with um, can find this page. So this is my website um, that I have. Have the service areas, the pricing. Yeah, and if you subscribe, um, you also get a notification in your email as well to sign up with uh, the Angel Studio. 
So the challenge I was talking about with my menu is, you know, this is the issue. I don't have it on the rest. So it, you know, doesn't click in and out. So, you know, that's a challenge that I'm having. But again, this is my add-ons page. Um, for things like I can do the custom props, themed backdrops, social media, video messaging, green screen technology and stuff like that um, for the events. Yep. And this is the about us page, our mission and values, what we do, um, what we believe in, our customer satisfaction, quality, creativity, collaboration, joy and celebration, because the whole point is to make sure we give your event, you know, make sure your event is great. Um, then I have my gallery page just to showcase, you know, uh, the work that we do. Um, we have our contact page where you can give us your contacts, your email, and you can submit that. Um, and we do have the making a reservation with us. You can choose the date, um, a future date that you want. Give us um, some, you know, event details that you need, and then just put in your contacts, any specific requirements, you can put that as well. You can go ahead and book with us. You can do our services. So again, this is where I mentioned the challenges, um, but I'll show you after we sign up. And also we have a blog page where you can read articles of what we do. So I'll go ahead and sign up. Um, let's say Nasser. So here we can input. So I usually get any images. So so I can choose like a copy image address and put it on there. And then I can create Nasser at Gmail. Six. And then we can sign up. So it shows it's updated. Um, if I refresh. So I think it's the screen I'm using. Um, it should be okay, but basically this is how it looks like once you sign in. And then you have the My Reviews and Ad Service um, as the added menus after you sign in. So if you accept a product, you can add reviews. Um, if you purchase the service, like let's say you can view details. You can leave a feedback. You can review ID two, one day ago. You can say like five star message. And then if you leave feedback, it reviews successfully. And if we come here, we can see that, um, that you know, you added the review for a product that, you know, you took. Um, so that's as far as my project goes and then I can log out. And then it says user logged out. So I'll go ahead and showcase my code. So basically for React, um, this is a basic um, structure um, of my React project. So I have the assets on here on, in the assets folder. And then I had my pages, components. So this is my registration um, page where we can sign in through email, Google sign-ins, GitHub, um, just different types of sign-ins. And then we have my pages. Let me just open them all up. So I have the um, services. This is um, the service cards that I used for this I was trying to use with my cart button. So I'll just put that aside. But then I had my about page, my add-ons page, 
and stuff for my banner, my blog page as well. Uh, and, so, uh, so Dennis, uh, what's the uh, what's the uh, extension for this JSX? Yes, JSX. Okay, so JSX. it's for it's for extension for the React files. Or yes. The, okay. Okay. Awesome. Yes. So Angular is same. I mean, you you also checked Angular. Angular also same uh, extension. So no, this is JSX is a syntax extension to JavaScript. So and it is mostly used with React. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, JavaScript, uh, Angular also same. Um, I mean JavaScript as well, uh -huh. like uh, like Node.js, you know, like uh, Angular, React. This actually. Uh, you 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 know better because you researched. And I know mm -hmm. I. So it's actually work in the server side. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this this React and Angular. So Angular React actually for developed by Facebook and Angular is uh, Google. I think React is also face um the is also Facebook I guess. Yeah, React Facebook. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Meta actually and uh, and. Angular is Google, but both are doing the same thing. I mean, it's based on JavaScript and mm -hmm. also work for the server side, server side scripting. You know, yeah, JavaScript. See. JavaScript is always the client side scripting, right? Yeah. But uh, but uh, you know, Angular, Java, uh, React, mm -hmm. and Node.js actually. So these yeah. change the technology. Okay, mm -hmm. and thinking you know because it is the server side, like Node type you know javascript so that is uh, that is good very nice that you you learned it and implemented it very nice awesome yeah yeah and i appreciate that yeah so i also have my firebase code um we initialized my api key and stuff and then i still have my routes my private routes and my routes so the private routes is the once you sign in the two menus that came in for the reviews and the ad service, those went through the private route so that, you know, once you sign in, that's when they show up. And then the normal ones just, you know, for the blogs and the add-ons and regular. Um, what else do I want to show you? So this is my Firebase. Um, and to see the authentication, you can see this is what we created um, for Nasser. So it, it works. Just wanted to show that it works. So I don't know. Do you have any questions? That's the end of my presentation. Awesome. Oh. That that's actually very nice. Yeah. Thanks, Thank Matt. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's actually very nice. Um, I you know before I will take question from the audience. I have a little bit question that you know. Uh, um, I I will I will you know when you submit your project, I'll go through your file and everything, mm -hmm. and definitely I if I have any question and everything, I will reach out to you. Okay. Sure. Uh, but now I have some question that if you go to your project, you see yes. some, you know, I'm just, you know, uh, I love your design. Okay. I'm just wondering that how you create your, uh, you know, those kind of, you know, uh, what is called design and everything. Yeah. If you go up, little, yeah, you see the, yeah, yeah, uh, no, uh, actually, yeah, go, uh, it's called down. down. Yeah. And uh, yeah, here you see mm -hmm. the shade, like, you know, uh classic you know the, some oh, banners like classic yeah. package premium package and deluxe package mm -hmm. and some banner and yeah. after that there is a shade can yeah. you show me those uh, lines of code that where you you know have some transparent shade and everything yeah. share like shadow what do, you, what do you call it shading yeah shading yeah shading hold on so I know if you get real clever with CSS, you can pull off some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Not me, though. <laughs> not an artist, sorry. Yeah. So hold on. So classic package. Okay. You have, you could just look at the element. It would tell you yeah. right where to go. Okay. So there's a classic package. Mm -hmm. So because I used inline um, CSS. Mm -hmm. 
So these these are the line, oh okay. yeah oh these are the lines of code yeah these are oh, the so lines so of code yeah okay so so all the way from so for each so until the next one hold on my screen is really tiny yeah there's this uh, you know yeah after you know see and everything so this. Let me sh showcase from my classic package. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Oh, sorry. Yes. Okay. So you have one. So all this, my polyline my circle and polyline SVG. You see this? This is the specific line you're looking for. You see it for the shadow? That's what you are looking for? Yeah, the, the shadows. Yeah. Is right. yeah. yeah. Well, that's pretty this is cool. the one. Yeah, okay. the opacity. So it's just different opacities for 75, 50, and 25. Oh, gosh. Okay. Yeah. Good job, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Right. and um, so you said there is Stripe. So I Stripe payment is so working. That no. So that is what I'm struggling with. Um, oh yeah, yes. Yeah. Hopefully by when I'm submitting um, tomorrow, I'll have already worked it out. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so when you're you know signing in, okay, or mm -hmm. signing up, sorry, signing up. So is it uh, is it a validation there like? It is. Um, it is checking that that. All right. Uh, my capstone project was a uh, mobile form application. So uh, my goal of it was to create a mobile application with the functionality of like a basic online form. Um, so you 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 have threads that users can make, um, add their own stuff. You can. Um, I wanted to kind of have a nice looking UI, uh, something kind of want to do with uh, with Android, um, and I also wanted to uh, have a little bit of a administrator um, features so that you can like do some moderating of a thread. That's like an important thing. So uh, the features of the app are that users can create. Um, accounts and log in with the email and password. Uh, they also can set up a display name uh, when they create an account. Um, and this uses uh, Firebase's authentication system. Um, they also create threads, uh, which threads consist of uh, titles, a text body, um, the like user ID and like username. Uh, and they also have two timestamps attached to them, which are uh, when it's initially posted and then also on the last comment um, so that you can sort it in the the browse threads activity. Um, users can comment on threads, which just consists of a, a text, the poster, uh, and a timestamp when the comment was posted, and that updates the, uh, the thread with the um, last edited comment timestamp. Um, on the uh, main browse threads activity, uh, users can sort it one of two ways, um, which is uh, sorting by date, which is just when a thread is posted. Uh, the second is when um, it's sorted by activity, which is uh, sorted by like the last um, comment posted. So basically the thread with the uh, the most recent comment is uh, is displayed first. Uh, has a navigation bar on the bottom for quick access to um, a couple different locations in the app. Um, and yeah, it has a uh, basic administration features so that uh, admin users can uh, remove uh, threads or comments. Uh, so the account system uses the Google's Firebase. Um, you can see here the uh, UI for the uh, account creation. And that's just like the, the Firebase um, thing. So you make like an authentication object. Uh, and then you can just use the uh, the create user with email and password. Um, you can see there, uh, this is the user profile change request. That lets me put a uh, display name. So we've got that. 
Here's just an example, like user creation. Uh, the threads. Here's some of the basic UI for a, a thread. You have the uh, this is to create a new activity menu, uh, just with some basic um, entering the text and the body. Uh, there's a character limit for the uh, title and body, which is 100 for the title, 500 for the body. Um, just so you know, you don't want someone to create a uh, an a excessively long uh, title or something that would mess up with all the UI. So you got that uh, comments. You can make a comment on a thread. It's got a uh, it's got the thing. It's got the timestamp there. It's got the uh, the main body of the comment and the the username. And uh, if the username or if the if the same poster posted a thread and then commented on it, and they have like an op next to their name, so you can tell who created the thread. They also have a character limit. Just there. Uh, that's just an example of a, a comment in the database. It's uh, got the key there, which is the comment ID. Or sorry, no. This is a this is a this is a thread actually. It's got the body. That's the last comment timestamp. That when you post a comment, it updates the last comment timestamp there. Uh, I use Firebase for the storage. So all the threads, comments, and power users, which are like for admin uh, stuff, are stored in uh, Firebase's real-time database. Uh, and it stores stuff as like a JSON object. So you uh, you kind of create just, and it works like the, the other, um, like entry framework core and stuff where you create a Java object and you can send that uh, to the database. Uh, here's an example. So if uh, your uh, user is logged in as an admin user, um, the UI will uh, show a big red button for remove. It'll detect like, okay, is this user um, an admin? Like, check the database, see if this user ID matches. Uh, tried to keep it a consistent style with the UI. Um, I went for kind of a. It's not quite a pure. Um, like dark mode, like you'd see in like uh, some apps, uh, there is kind of some brighter grays, but just kind of a, a medium, dark to light gray, um, nothing too extreme. I didn't want to, you know, I wanted to do something so that it didn't cause eye strain because for a lot of these form apps, you're going to be, you know, the goal is to have people browse for a large amount of time. So I wanted to do that. Of course, I use the Cycle Blue uh, Recycle View. Um, that's just, you got to use it for uh, if you want any uh, list of any great size. Otherwise, the uh, memory stuff would become uh, too much to handle. It's got a uh, bottom navigation bar. Uh, that was pretty fun to learn how to set one up and use. And set up like the, uh, make the, get the icons and set up the, the menu item. I also have uh, future goals for the project um, to kind of flesh it out a bit more for a, a, pro, um, a portfolio kind of thing. Um, and so I have a couple goals there and I want to add um, sub forms. Um, so I can divide uh, threads based off of topic. Um, I already have an idea of how to do that. Uh, I just need the time to go in and uh, create a new menu, create a new way for like admin users to create um, a sub forum, and then users can scroll through that. Uh, I also want to add a um, some form of comment reply system so that you can reply to someone and um, other people can see like who you're replying to. Um, because right now what you'd have to do is kind of the old style way of doing where, where you just put like at someone's name so you know that you're oh this is directed at that user uh, i want to expand moderation tools uh, i'd like to add um, banning and muting users um, some sort of account management system uh, so i can like add in uh, new administrators or moderators with uh, different um different like roles and uh What's the word? Abilities. I'm 
blanking on the uh, right word there. Uh, privileges. There you go. Uh, I also want to expand the account system. I think it'd be good to have like a basic uh, like profile page. So if you like selected, uh, clicked on someone's name, uh, it could show like a, a basic description of uh, what who this person is. Um, maybe have like a, a an icon that they can upload uh, for like a profile picture, uh, something like that, and then uh, let people edit that. Um, also, like I mentioned earlier, I wanted to add a, a email verification or maybe two factor authentication. Uh, to the fire uh, using Firebase, um, just so that you know it's it you have to use actual email, so you have actual accounts. It's not just okay if this is like a unique thing in the database, then it allows it and kind of has something. Uh, so you actually need like a valid uh, email account to actually make an account. I think would be good. Um, and also on that like user profile thing, uh, letting users modify their display name after account creation uh, would probably be a, a good thing to have um, just so that uh, users aren't just stuck with it. You can allow like uh, people to change their username essentially. No, looks at all that and then bring up. No, that's me. I've, I've been having problems with the GitHub, but doesn't matter here we launch that so here is the uh the main like page uh, you can see the nav bar at the bottom here let me log out and log in here using like a just one of the existing accounts I see you uh, logged in there. I can create a new account. With the username. Yeah, and then you can go to the uh, the browse threads page. And this just has all the threads. Um, well, queries and references are basically the same thing. There's like two differences between them. Um, whenever there's a child of a reference is changed, it automatically will call this. Um, so this is how I uh, uh, display the uh, the objects in the recycler view. It's just uh, once one's added, it'll automatically uh, call this on um, the client, and then it'll send the object in a snapshot you just get the information from that snapshot uh and just use the uh the adapters from recycle view and uh just create the uh the fragment i guess uh, any questions uh so actually great work i i love that um you know there is a huge, huge improvement, and uh, you know, than the last time I see, I saw it. And appreciate your design, and also functionality. Okay. And thank you so much. Um, you demonstrate your code a little bit, and I also go through that. I have just you know a little bit. Uh, you know, if you kindly go through the things that uh, is there any limit that how many comment I can add on a page and what kind of page you use so that you know uh, it, it is unlimited like I need, I need I can go you know down 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 unlimited or and yeah uh, because it's just a recycle view there's not like mm -hmm. a, a limit to oh, okay. how many comments you could make mm -hmm. um, it'll just kind of keep scrolling down oh, I, see. Well, I guess I, I probably I could add like a, a timer mm -hmm. I think Shouldn't be too bad just so that uh you can't like spam them really quickly but you, you just oh nice okay it's just play all there mm -hmm. and uh another thing is that when you are doing sorting okay uh so how you are doing sorting can it be you know two way you are sorting right uh sorting the comments 
Yeah, so when I populate the thread view, um, <clears throat> I pass it a Boolean uh, sorted by date. Mm -hmm. um, and that basically changed the, um, the only thing it changes is the database reference. Because um, Firebase, uh, you can uh, you can just use order by child, um, and so basically, I'm looking at a given thread. Mm -hmm. And uh, make that smaller. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. So yeah, instead of uh, ordering yeah. the child by mm -hmm. the um, the posted timestamp, I'm just ordering it by the last comment timestamp. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Which so I'm the 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 way that posted. yeah. Mm -hmm. So the way that it will be displaying the data on the screen, that that thing is changing. You know, the, because it is coming from the database, but it is changing the display format based on the some of the you know parameter or some of the action. Yeah, right? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm changing um, the order of the, the data I'm getting from the database. Mm -hmm. uh, none of the sorting happens like client side. Um, it's just getting like the the information from the database in a different mm -hmm. order. Um, mm -hmm. Just based off those two timestamps. And where's the. Did comment timestamp. Where is that one? Here you go. Uh, and this is the code that uh, updates the. Um, you just pass it a thread ID. So when you successfully miss a comment, it's going to call this. Um, gives it a th the thread ID and it just looks mm -hmm. through, finds that thread. Um, it sets the value of the server of the um, timestamp to a new uh, server value dot timestamp. Mm, awesome, yeah, that's good. Thank you so much for showing me that. Uh, you know, and also clarifying the questions. I appreciate it. Um, I'm just wondering, audience, have any question? Mm. No questions from me. Not not really. I was kind of curious about like how the threading of the messages worked, but like um, how they show up to people other than yourself. Um, you mean like how? What do you, you mean like how do you like see it? Because um. Well, like it's it's like I saw a bunch of post by like one person but it didn't kind of give me like an idea of the flow of conversations on the app but it's okay it's oh yeah um i don't have a reply system it is just like a sequential list of um, comments essentially um that's something i want to add other than just like you could add right. like at it's like Twitter. If everybody had to quote read everybody. Yeah, you 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 could do that. Um, unless you found like the old style, uh, and a not as a report, but um, yeah. Like, but uh, I want like like to have a reply system. You no, know, yeah. If you had to compare it to like any other site like this, like what would you say your uh, goal is in terms of, like where you want this to progress to? Um. Uh. Seeing like so you have to be like, like somebody else forums. exploring like like if if you were to compare to like existing forums, social media sites like that, like what do you think this would be closest to when it reaches its maturity? Um, basically like a, a forum, like an online forum. Uh, they're not you know, so like that Reddit. common nowadays. But I know uh, I used to be like on them. forums all the time. Yeah, I kind of yeah. miss them. I, they're still around, but nobody nobody uses them as much. So. Yeah, so I kind of got that um, some stuff uh, inspired a bit by like I looked at like the Reddit app, like how is this um, like Reddit? So I looked at like the mobile Reddit app. Okay, how is this kind of laid out? I got some inspiration there. Good idea. Um, no need to reinvent the wheel after. <laughs> yeah, and this does have um, unique. It doesn't have unique display names. They're just like display names that you can set to whatever. So I guess that's a that's a bit similar to like Discord. So I looked a bit at that as well. And that kind of has like the the just the sequential list of um mm -hmm. of messages. Although now Discord. there's like a reply system, but that was that's like semi-recent. 
What do you mean? Discord's had replies. It's, from... it's, it's had it for like a couple of years, I think. I, I guess, but uh, it's never been truly anonymous. Like you have like your Discord ID, and then you can choose nicknames on a per channel basis. Yeah, but, yeah. But everybody can see your like actual Discord ID. So. Yeah, that's kind of something I was uh, thinking of adding was a um, a unique ID system so that you could say like, okay, you can differentiate two users with the same like um, display name. That's also sure. something I'm planning on yeah. adding. That's all I had, and I think it looks great. Awesome, yeah. I, I, I don't miss Android programming. God, I feel like every time I built an app on Android, it was like building a house of cards. <laughs> not because it was my fault. It was just you're emulating not just another yeah. operating system, but a whole different architecture. It's like double whammy. It's not going to work so great. Yep, the emulator's a uh, a bit weird sometimes, but uh, you know, usually I'll just restart it if it starts acting uh, too weird, and that usually fixes the problem. Yeah, I got through it. It was just, I just felt rickety. Awesome. So, yeah, as uh, Joshua and uh, Matt, Danny said that, yeah. Awesome work. Great work. I appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. Uh, no super awesome. I, I love that. Thank you. And yeah, you're very welcome. So yeah, uh, please request you um, give a big round of applause for Matt for his nice work. Yeah. Great job. Thank you, Matt. Very good. All right. Thank you. Um, I guess I'll swap over to my laptop again. Sure. Here we go. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate it. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Joshua, you're ready. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the only one left. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm very a while ago. Everybody's <laughs> a lot faster than me right now. I haven't slept in a while, so. <laughs> All right. Let me get ready here. Sure. I am not a PowerPoint guru, so I hope we're expecting much on the front, but I'll do my best. How do I maximize it? Yeah, screw it. All right. Yeah, if you click on present, uh, this is, is on the right <laughs> top corner. Uh, there's a present thing. How about from the top left, from beginning? Thank yeah, you. So. I got it. Thanks. Yeah. I just, uh, all right. So for those who don't know me, my name's Joshua Gilbert. been at RTC for a while now. Uh, this quarter, working on an MVC7 project. Started off as MVC6, and I migrated to 7 kind of midway through. Well, more than midway, but all the same. Uh, my goal was to not just, well, not really learn MVC because I've studied it before, but it's been a while since I have worked with MVC. And I really needed to get current on my skills and get them up to snuff, especially if, you know, looking at getting a job anytime soon that may potentially require those kinds of skills. And I wanted to challenge. Um, I find these kinds of applications tend to be an interesting challenge because you're, you're you're trying to juggle like three or four different frameworks and technologies to to accomplish something, and it's not always easy. Although it's gotten easier, but um, I remember it was kind of interesting sometimes trying to get JavaScript to communicate to cooperate with your uh, ADO apps. Anyways, moving on. So the good news is I did learn a lot about MVC seven. And I got a lot more comfortable with Bootstrap this quarter. I used to hate Bootstrap. Like I, I just I didn't want to sit there and reason out like what all the different properties meant. But with the amount of I've had to 
enter it this time around and deal with it. I'm like, ah, this isn't so bad and actually makes sense. Like if you stop and learn what all the abbreviations are for, they're very, they're actually very intuitive and I haven't been giving it nearly enough credit because it can do some nice stuff and make fast way, at least for prototyping something. I can't recommend it because you can get something up really quick in a hurry that looks decent. Uh, if you don't want to sit down and do a bunch of custom CSS, I, I, I think it's a great option. There's others too, but Bootstrap's better than I gave it credit for. Uh, a project isn't quite where I wanted to be. Um, there's some parts that aren't quite working as well as they should, but it's also pretty close to being where I want it to be, which I was kind of surprised at. Um, I figured I'd at least, I mean, I'd be somewhere good with it by the end, but um, I figured you're, there's, there's always something else you want to implement, something else you want to continue on. Scope Scope creep isn't just you know, a thing you hear about. It's <laughs> it's a lifestyle for some people. All right. So one of my problems was I like I said, I haven't been using MVC for a while. So I've been out I was out of practice, but I found some uh decent online classes that were actually very helpful. The first one, uh it was good at the start and then it kind of petered off towards the end of the class. And I was felt like I was kind of just left holding a bag like you didn't finish the class right you know but uh i found another one that was actually pretty good and it's a lot more comprehensive he's actually the guy who got me um much more comfortable with bootstrap because he uses a lot of it just, uh, okay we're doing this now all right moving on uh bad is uh it's it's been really difficult for me to find good free resources on mvc and asp.net that isn't really far, far out of date. Like I can find really good guides on like 3.5, 4.0, 5.0, but anything like like very current is it was was really hard to find. Uh, this drove me crazy. I spent a better part of a day trying to find the best way to store uh image files in my database this used to be really easy in fact it is easy if you do it model first instead of what i was doing was code first model first it's simple just declare a, a var binary at max and you're good to go you can store whatever the heck you want in it just uh stream a, a byte uh array into it and you're good you know no problem but uh doing it through like the, the code first thing it was pulling teeth and it still didn't work. I, I still wound up going with the API and using a cloud provider for storage. But that's okay, because I needed something like that for this app, because I wasn't doing an e-commerce site. I didn't have a go-to API to kind of show that I could interface with other sites and make my code more robust. So it was a good excuse to do something like that. Going on. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep going with this project. I've had a lot of fun working on it. Um, and I think. A little bit of work, I could abstract it to a point where I could apply this to a good number of, probably not anything where it's like a like a commerce site, but any kind of personal site with business website, anything like that. I think it's uh, a pretty good starter for that. Um, I like the final. I, the other thing that's been going through is like last two and a half years. Like, I mean, this is getting kind of personal. I'm sorry. Uh, I haven't been able to really get myself to write any code. And it's not because I don't want to or don't like it. It's just, I I, I can't seem to get the, I'll sit there and look at my ID, uh, you know, with, with a blank project and I just cannot get myself to do anything. I can't even like look at a project or you know, grab a project from online and go, I'm going to go complete this just to say in practice. I don't know what was wrong with me, but this finally kind of broke that though. So well, that's a good thing. All right. Let's, Let's move on to the project. I there, there we go. Okay. All right. This is just the project. Nothing running. Um, do you want to see it running first, then go through the code, or would you rather go through the code and then see it running? 
Uh, yeah. So if you can leave, you know, go through the running first and then. Okay. No problem. Go through the, yeah. Let me know if you can see anything too. I might have to switch the sharing. Can you guys see anything? Nope. Okay. Oh, no. Let me fix that. Uh, maybe, no, that's not it. Uh, there we are. All right. So this is the front page. We still need some work. I got to get rid of this part on the side. Actually, this whole nav bar, I'm tempted to just get rid of because I don't intend to use any of it. Um, I never got to the authentication and uh, stage of things. That's why you still see the admin stuff. So this is all supposed to be hidden until you log in as, with an admin account. And then you'd have access to these admin pages to let you uh, do more serious editing. Um, also, this home thing is completely redundant. This button, the Spring Web Project and this home button do the exact same thing. And it's always befuddled me, like, why that's just there. But whatever. This used to be like a little, like, um, like stack of three bars, like, like a collapsible menu. And used to collapse them up and down. And they got rid of it for some reason. I don't know why. So this is the where you can add an article. I'll just throw in some stuff. Do. Uh, where is the button? Oh, wait, wrong. <laughs> okay. It gives you a little preview right there on there. This needs to be fixed. Also, it should be a timestamp, not something people enter. Uh, duh, 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 duh. I was in a mood. Don't mind me. Eventually, I'd have this so that you could, I could hide, I could work on posts and keep them hidden until they were ready to actually post or do work ahead so that I have all this ready to go. This is supposed to be for like a, like a company website. You, this would be like where you would announce things that your company's doing or products are coming out, but you don't want to wait till the day of to make your, to write your press release, right? So you, you, you want to have it waiting to go, but not necessarily where, uh, here we can see it. So it'll save, but uh, it'll show here, we can see here, and I can, the edit button works and I can delete. Most of this works. This doesn't work super well. Uh, is it gonna let me go home? Apparently not. Why did this stop working? I think it froze. Yep, there we go. That's new. Um, okay, oh yeah, because I was much right before class, started mucking around with stuff and I messed things up. Yeah, I started messing around with the models before class. So apparently I I I'm causing null exceptions now. Let's get this fired back up. There's not much else to see, so we'll go through the code here in a minute. Why I'm oh, nope. Okay. I was afraid of that. Anyways, I want to show you one thing before we get to, this is gonna be should be fast. Let me make sure it's still here. Yep, there's all right. And so I've been using um Cloudinary. This is a cloud service and this is the file uploader. This is done through the API. And I'll walk you through the API when we do the code review. But um, I just wanted to show that it does mostly work. <laughs> it's just needs a little bit of tweaking. Anyways, let's go through the code. I don't have much else to say about the running part of it, um, unless you want to see something specific. All right, here we go. All right. So generally, I start these things use with uh, with models, but I usually start with the database side and work my way forward. I don't 
usually like doing code first, but uh, I keep hearing it's the way. I have the, these are the, I said a couple of classes I made. These aren't the last ones I was going to make. They're just ones I started with so I can get the project going. These are the key parts, the articles and the, and the images that would be displayed throughout the article. Uh, that was going to be expanded, of course, to include like offices for the company, you know, anything else that seemed appropriate, but they weren't necessary for like the, the basic operation of the site. But I, I just didn't worry about getting too in depth with uh, creating uh, models for, for some. So. Um, I'm also using the repository system that MVC uh, suggests uh, to further remove the models from the views. Uh, most of this has been arranged to go through the repositories instead of directly to the domain models um, or I'll go through the view models. Um, I'm, I'm just going through the stuff that's actually either mostly stuff that I've made instead of stuff that's just scaffolded. Okay. I'm not sure where to start here. Okay. So these are the, all my controllers. Nothing too crazy here. Simple way to uh, maintain that separation of concerns between your model and the user. Keep the users well away from your models. Um, I think where I got messed up, I was trying to establish a um, one-to-many relationship between these two tables and kind of just got lost in the sauce or something along the way because I've had a hell of a time trying to get references to my images from the article like you know getting them to like recognize one another on the same page has been a not just a hassle um i just got to do a little more reading i think uh I, I i this used to be real easy and i'm not sure what i forgot so um the view models really just um uh, I just have nothing to say about them. Uh, this is that form I was using to before to add the um, to add the page. This is where I got that uh, YCWig editor from. It's from what's the name of that site? Anyways, I didn't write it, but that's where it's implemented. Uh, this is this was just for testing the. Is, is from Code Binary, right? Uh, let me look. Yeah, it's your... uh, you know, I'll just have to. I don't have it. I don't have the website open anymore. Oh. But um, now I'm gonna have to purge the database before I can start this up again. And just because this, there's like a little powered by thing on the on the editor itself. So. Um, but yeah, most of this was just for testing to make sure that it was actually reading the files and uploading it to the to the Cloudinary, which I was real happy and pleased that worked. It was a little, tr honestly, this was the trickiest part to get working. Like it was uploading just fine until I started working on stuff to test it with. And then for some reason, it started getting broken. Go figure, right? Um, edit is just a modified form of the ad one, you know. It, it's the difference being it's going to load the stuff onto the page before you start, and whereas add is blank sheets. Uh, just a way to list all of my articles, mostly for admin purposes. Um, eventually, though, I want to get rid of that menu entirely. It'll just be you log in and you'll have buttons that appear within the articles and around the photos to manage them. So you can just press it and get rid of it. You don't have to go. I mean, I, I might think of some like, Otherwise, like if you need to do like, because I'm thinking like that might be a little cumbersome for doing like a lot of work. Like for it sounds like 
it'd be fine for like an individual article. But if you're trying to manage a hundred articles and you need to go through, you know, a few dozen photographs, you don't want to go through every article. You might prefer to have one big sheet where you could do that. So I have to think of some alternate views for for doing that kind of uh, editing where it's when it's necessary. Um, What am I missing? This is all this the standard stuff. I uh that's obviously scaffolded, although I did write this, but uh no, that's not the one I wrote. Excuse me, I'll talk to you in a minute. Sorry, my wife is calling. Uh um, Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, it's just regular really VC stuff, you know. Um, where am I? I had more stuff on the show. Uh, da -da -da. Not that, not that. Um, Okay. Well, I didn't expect the, uh, <laughs> I didn't expect that error. Um, let me see if I can fix that real quick. So I can at least show you some more stuff on the site. Cause right now I'm, I, I, it's just going to crash when I start up. But if I, I think if I clear out that table, it'll be fine. I can do that through SQL Studio Management Studio. Where is it? Article that was articles, yeah. Let's top one thousand. Sort of like thing. Yep, there is down. Come on. Oh, here we are. <laughs> 